Across the vast supercontinent of Pangaea 260 million years ago, the climate is hot and dry, with little rainfall making it far inland. Closer to the coast, however, flora and fauna become more common, and it is here, in what will one day be South Africa, we find one of the Permian period's largest animals. These squat, round creatures are called moschops. 2.5 meters long and weighing up to 300 kilograms, they are some of the largest herbivores the planet has seen up to this point. During the dry season, they will march across the vast deserts in search of food and water. But it is during the wet season that their environment and behavior changes. Moschops prefer to live semi-aquatically, and when the rivers, lakes, and swamps they visit fill in the wet season, they can usually be seen half or fully submerged in the shallow water, feeding on the soft plant life or wallowing in the mud. A far more relaxing existence than the hot desert treks with only the tough woody plants of the dry season. For the females it is time to recuperate and relax, but not so much for the males. The wet season is also the mating season, and now the males will compete to see who is top most chops. There is very little fighting, with most males being able to tell which of them is the largest, with the smaller males quickly backing off from a fight. Only one male will get access to a group of females, and so after much sizing up, eventually it comes down to the two largest males. Both of the nearly two meter tall bulls stand directly in front of each other, with heads held high trying to intimidate the other. Neither backs down, and so now they move towards each other until their chests are only centimeters away, and the proper contest begins. Both males pull their heads back, and then swing them forward, slamming them together, creating a resounding crack that echoes across the valley. They hit with the thickest parts of their skulls to reduce injury, but even still, when bone strikes bone, eventually something has to give. Though their skulls are evolved to take such punishment, the fighting pair are almost even in both strength and stubbornness. They pull their heads back again and crash their skulls together, sending another loud crack through the air. Then comes another, and another, but the fourth is joined by a low moan. One of the males swings his head to the side for a moment, and though he still manages to pull his head up in time to meet his opponent's fifth headbutt, this final blow is too much for him. The defeated male is battered off to the side, and he slowly limps away, his vision blurry, and his movements jagged and sluggish. The victorious male gives a few growls of victory before turning and walking towards some shade. He spends the next five minutes mostly staring to the distance, waiting for the world to stop spinning. He has sustained multiple minor skull cracks, but these will recover in time. In the end, he has won the right to mate, and the females will be there as soon as he has recovered. He just has to hope no other males decide to challenge him for the rest of the season. For repeated or constant fights could lead to far worse than a broken skull. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down another rotund herbivore from the Permian, Moschops. Moschops' first remains were found in South Africa in 1910, and its name is Greek for calf face. It lived between 265 and 260 million years ago in the late Permian era, not long before the mass extinction event known as the Great Dying. Moschops grew to 2.7 meters in length, stood around 1.8 meters tall, and weighed between 130 and 330 kilograms, making it a very heavy set herbivore. In fact, it was one of the largest terrestrial herbivores that had evolved at that point. Though its head is quite small for its body, the skull was incredibly thick, up to 10 centimeters in places. This thick skull was backed up by a short, thick neck, which not only reinforced the skull, but also gave it strong jaw muscles. Inside its jaws, it had long, crowned, stout teeth, leading scientists to believe that most chops mainly fed on tough, nutrient-poor plants like cycads. Eating such poor quality food may have meant most chops had to eat a lot in order to get enough nutrients, and may have also been why its body is so wide and barrel-like, needing a larger gut in order to store and digest kilos and kilos of plants. The anatomy of the forelimbs meant that it held its upper body high, 
but the position of the elbow joints meant that most chops didn't have such a sprawled out posture as you'd expect from a reptile. Instead, it had a more erect gait, similar to a mammal. Even with this, however, most chops probably couldn't reach high speeds, or run for very long either. This upright body and thick head has led many to believe that most chops would engage in headbutting when fighting with each other, over mates, territory, or even position in a group. It's unlikely that they would charge each other to headbutt, like bighorn sheep or musk ox. It's more likely they got right up to one another and then slammed their heads together or pushed their skulls against each other, similar to modern elephant seals. Recent scans of Moschop's skulls and other bones of its body showed that their skulls and spines are lined up incredibly well in order to distribute forces to the head. So much like later pachycephalosaurs, Moschop's was well suited to taking and dishing out bone-cracking blows. An interesting theory has come out that Moschop's may have been semi-aquatic, as its environment was at times quite wet, with regular rivers and lakes. It may have acted similar to a modern hippo, though not quite as well adapted to life underwater. This has also given rise to a theory on why it has such high crowned teeth. Perhaps along with tougher plants, Moschops was also going after hard shelled prey, like mussels in shallow water. Some creatures that lived alongside include Tapinocephalus, Bradosaurus, and Struphiaceptalus. So, Moschops. Another successful herbivore and an interesting creature that had adapted to a tough environment and tough competition from its own kind. But what do you think of Muschops? And for my question of the week, do you think headbutting is a viable behaviour to continue your species or a hindrance to it? What lesser known extinct creature would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.